Shalom. Well. Giving all praise to you. How about Shemi Shai? Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutations to every brother preaching the truth throughout the four corners of the earth with truth and sincerity. All right. It's the brother Shamaria coming at you from the Indiana camp, uh, doing a little quick lesson. And uh, hopefully this lesson is edifying, but it's this lesson really just purely came off inspiration. And this, the the topic of this lesson is going to be the wonders of Moses or the wonders of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, because a wonder is a miracle. Go into that word wonder real quick. And the first scripture I'm going to get is Exodus chapter 4 verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest and return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before thee. It says before Pharaoh, do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thy hand. So the Lord put that power in Moses' hand. Do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. All right. Now, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart was a wonder in itself. All right, let's go into that word wonder. A wonder is a wonder, a sign, a miracle. A wonder, a sign, a token, a future event. It says, as a special display of God's power. You know, a special display of God's power. So that's God's power, the Lord, uh, the, that Pharaoh hardened his heart because that was the Lord displaying his power. You know, nobody in their right minds would have held Israel that long, 10 plays after, um, 10, 10, a whole 10 plagues. You know, they would have let them go after the first or second, after they, after a, a good king would see his empire crumbling and falling as he's going to lose power he would you know do whatever whatever he has to do to keep his empire but the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that was a that was a wonder in itself because why the lord displayed his power you know that was a miracle you know that's that's the main topic of this video of the miracles of exodus you know and i'm just going to get the the first the first couple of miracles man you know i'm not going to make this video all you know i'm not getting every single miracle in exodus this video will be an hour you know, I just only get, you know, one of the one of the beginning the beginning miracles. You know, not the plagues, but miracles beside the plagues. You know? Besides the plagues. It says uh God, this is Exodus chapter three, verse two. And then we're gonna get the burning bush. You know, because this is a miracle. It says, we'll start from the top. Now Moses kept the flock of Jephthro, his father in law, and the priest of Median. And he led the flock into the into the backside of the desert and came into the mountain. And God, the bound of God, even to Harab. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt? Bush not even burnt and his flame is his own fire. You know, I should turn aside and see. I should turn the I should turn the side for what I'm doing and see this bush. Why is it on fire and it's not being burned? And the Lord said, and the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, and Yahweh said, and it's like and Yahweh called him unto it's like Yahweh called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. You know, and then that's when the Lord started to tell uh, uh, Moses what he gonna do and how he gonna do it, and Moses started to doubt. And, you know, that was a, that's that's leading into what um, the Lord gonna tell Moses to do, freeing the children of Israel. But I just wanted to get that one point about the burning bush. The bush was burning, but it wasn't being consumed by the fire. You know, that's a miracle. The second miracle I'm gonna get is the rod turning into the serpent. You know, that's. Just, the, the, the second time, of course, because the rod, the uh, the Lord, Moses cast down his rod. Uh, actually, I'm going to get the first time. Yeah, this is the first time because he cast down his rod on his loan. Then he went to the Pharaoh and then Pharaoh got his magicians. And then he cast his rod down again and turned to a serpent. You know, but I think, I, this is the first time he cast down his, his staff, he cast down his serpent, he cast down his staff and it became a serpent. Shalakia. Like this is the first time. It says uh, Exodus ch chapter 4, verse 3. 
And it said, I'm going to get verse 2. I'm going to start at the top. And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my, in my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. This is right after I got the part about the burning bush, you know. After the Lord told Moses to do what he is supposed to do, the Lord, you know, Moses said this. He said, Behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto me, to thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is in thy hand? And he said, A rod. Verse 3. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. <laughs> you know, Moses was probably bugging out. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand, and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand, and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they believed that the Lord, Yahweh of their fathers, says that they believed that the Lord, yeah, the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. And, and it's another miracle, verse 6. It says, And the Lord said, Put further, and the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thine bosom. And he put his hand into, into his bosom, and when he took it out, Behold, his hands was leprous, leprous as snow. All right, and this, this is verse 6 of uh, chapter 4 in Exodus. Um, verse 6, it says, And the Lord said, Furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thine bosom, put thine hand into thine breast, you know, thine bosom and, and thine shirt, or put thine hand into thine bosom, you know. And it says, And he put his hand in his bosom, and he said, And when he looked, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand was white. You know, in today's age, and being like, you know, in today's realm, they describe lepers as being covered in mumps or bumps or blisters and sores. You know, that's not true. Because that was actually a plague on Egypt, to have bumps and blisters and sores. That's not leprosy. Leprosy, in today's age, you know, Esau has changed things up so much upside down and today's disease for leprosy is a uh, vitiligo if you go to google and look up vitiligo it'll show you what true leprosy was because you know to, uh, contact schools and verse 6 it says and he took it out and behold his hand was leprous as snow you know snow ain't got all this if it's if leprous is if leprous is bumps and mumps and, and blisters and sores why to describe the color? You know? Verse 7. And he, and he said, Put thine hand into thine bosom again. And he pulled out, and he and he put his hand into his bosom and again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. So it came from one color to another. You know? And like I said, today's disease known as vitiligo is true leprosy. And they try to they, they they actually change the name of that because they escaped what leprosy was. You know they they they, they turn things upside down. You saw do that. You shall seek to change times and laws. You know. All right, and then the next scripture I'm going to get is when Moses divided the Red Sea. You know through the Spirit and the power of Yahweh by Shemi Al Shai. All right, and this is Exodus chapter 14 verse 22. All right. This is after Pharaoh actually let the children of Israel go. And it says, And the children of Israel went unto the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Oh, Shlakia. I'm going to start at 21. And Moses, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea. And the Lord, say the Lord is, Moses is working through the Lord, you know, through the spirit and the strength and the power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh, Shai, you know. It's like the, the spirit and the strength and the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. We're able to do these videos and push this, this, this word and it's true for him. You know, we working through the Lord. It's the Lord's strength and the Lord's power. It says, and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go, to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went unto the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand 
and on their left. All right, and that was a miracle, man. The Lord literally parted a sea, an ocean, man. The Lord parted the ocean so they can walk across that mug on dry ground. They could have, it, the Lord could have just made them walk on the water. You know, the Lord parted the ocean so they could walk on dry ground. You know, and then later on in the story, uh, after the after the Egyptians followed them, the children of Israel made it across the sea, and the Lord closed it back up. You know, and they saw the corpse of the they saw the corpse corpses of the uh, Egyptians washed on the shore, man. And, you know, the Lord is epic, man. And I just got inspired to do that after I, I, after reading Exodus. You know, I just got inspired to do this lesson because it, it, honestly, the the Lord. The Lord is epic, man, and this is just a, this is just one of the many ways He displayed His power, you know. And the next, the last one I'm going to get is Exodus 15, verse 25. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, a like it. I'm going to go a little bit up. 23. This is Exodus 15, verse 23. And when they came to Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the word Mara means bitter. You know, it's the only name. It just, you know, said that in verse 24. And the people murmured against Moses and saying, what shall we drink? And when they say murmured, they lodged to, to stop over. They to pass the night to abide. I was like, I got the wrong word. They murmured. Well, basically, they murmured. You know, they complained. They complained like, ah, oh, mumbling and shit, talking shit. They complained against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Feed us, Moses. What we going to drink, man? You know, complaining and shit. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which uh, showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. It says, uh, there he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. You know, uh, he drunk the they drunk the sweet water, man. He turned the bitter water into sweet by casting the tree into it, man. And that's that's. I'm gonna get one more scripture because I love. I love. Um, I love this scripture. Um. Verse 6. It says, this, I'm going to start at verse 4. This is Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 4. It's not a miracle right here, but it's just Moses giving praises and songs to the Lord. It's so elegant. And I just wanted to share it with you, brother. I hope this is, you know, I hope it's edifying. And this, is, this is Exodus chapter 15, verse 4. It says, And Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's chariots and his, and, his, and his host hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as a stone. It says, Thine right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power, and thine right hand, O Lord, have dashed in pieces the enemy. Uh, Shlaki, I'm going to give verse 11. This is uh, at Second Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. This is, the, this, is, this is the scripture that I love so much. It says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee? So he's saying, who? what other God is like our God? You know, what other God is working wonders like this, doing miracles? The God, he confounded the gods of Egypt, man. All the gods of Egypt that that that, that Egypt, that the Egyptians were serving and, and worshiping, he cast those gods to the ground. He made them confounded. He says, who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Love that scripture. You know, doing wonders, you know, because don't know no other God does marvelous wonders. Extraordinary. I'm going to that word, going into that word. Wonder, wonder, marvel, extraordinary, hard to understand, a thing, hard to understand. It says of God's acts, judgment, redemption. You know, that's heavy, man. Doing marvelous wonders, you know, doing wonders. Marvelous to be to be marvelous to be wonderful to be surpassing to be extraordinary to be separate by distinguishing of action 
So the so basically Moses saying, Who what other God is like unto thee? Wonder, you know, what other God is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, doing extraordinary works, distinguishing yourself from the other gods. You know? And that's all I got, man. The Lord is the only true God, man. Fuck all these other uh, idols that these people worship, man. All these singers and Jay Z's and little fuck all that, man. The Lord is with Israel, man, and the Lord is the only true power, the the omnipotent power, man. You know. And that's all I got, man. With that, with that, I hope this video is edifying. I hope, I hope, uh, I hope I inspired, inspired, you know, you know, whoever watching, you know, I hope it was edifying. With that, I'm gonna say shallow one.